Hi, I'm Steve and I make everything. And in this video, we're gonna follow up on our previous uh, Retina Engrave uh, day one experience and we'll call this the day two experience. So in the previous video, we looked at raster images and just how to take a raster and do a quick engrave on your laser. In this video, we'll look at vectors. Now vectors are a little more complicated they're basically outlines of things and they can be filled, they can just be lines. So there's a lot of variation, but the advantage of vectors is that you can scale them forever. So they can, you can make them super tiny and they'll maintain their detail or you could make it a whole, the whole workspace on your laser and it would be the same detail. So there are advantages. The other advantage is if you have multiple vectors on, on your workspace, they don't all have to be engraved the same. You could have some that are darker and lighter and we'll actually do that in this video. So let's get going on this. Okay, so before we get started, I wanna go jump into Inkscape for a second and show you the image we used in the last video and I'll put a link to that video up here. Um, so uh, it's just the hello world video and you can see the only thing I did here was I deleted the, the the red frame that was around it. If you go look in the other video, you'll see there was a there was a red cut line there, and uh, I'll show you why that happened and how we put that back. We're still going to draw this image and we're going to cut it out, but we're going to do it a different way in Retina Engrave. So that's uh, that's kind of the initial start here for Inkscape. I'm in RE3 here now, the uh, the laser software and. I loaded the uh, Hello World hand drawing from Inkscape, the PDF version of it. And I've only loaded the vector if, if I expand it here. And sorry if I'm looking this way, it's where my monitor is. So I have the vector and I have these two familiar elements from the, from the first video. I have the hand and I have Hello World, the text. So what I can do, since I'm here, just a quick little uh, note on what you can do with the project. Since I know this is the hand, I can double click on that text there that says element one and I can just change it. And same with the element zero, it's the text. And what that allows us to do is if you actually wanted to save this project, we could call it hello world. And uh, we could then save this project to uh, either the FSL cloud or to our local drive. And I could just do that by doing a, an export of the project to a file. I tend not to bother for most projects because usually setup is pretty simple. But anyway, just a quick side note there on what you can do with projects. Now that we have these two elements, we, we still don't have our, our cut line on the outside and I'll show you how to get that in a second. But we have really just two, these are both vectors since we only loaded the vector. So we really just have the outlines of things. So if we said what we really wanna do is, is fill these. So I want, instead of drawing two thin lines around this hand, I want all of the stuff in between those two lines to be filled. I can go over here and the first thing we wanna do is, is select a color for it. For this one, I'll use black since it's, uh, I mean, it's already that color. Now what I can do is if you look over in the this vector fill and rasterize section on the right hand side, you'll see there's the no fill, which is the default selection. And then there's four different ways we can fill this thing. So if, if I just select the first one, that's a fill that will do horizontal lines. And you can see the hand actually now kind of filled in the way we want it. Uh, or I can draw vertical lines as I fill. And these are lines as the laser head is moving. So it's this is the direction the laser will be going, uh, diagonal or concentric rectangles here. For this, I'll just to be different, I'll use the vertical. Now there's also this notion of an outline. Usually what happens when you when you draw a vector is it'll do the fill first and then it will draw the outline, which which was these lines that I showed you before the fill. You may or may not want to do that depending on what you're working on. Uh, sometimes you do it for effect, but you can turn off this outline and I'll leave it on for this one. But if you were working on a material like cardboard where the actual kind of energy level is pretty sensitive, sometimes what'll happen is after it does the fill and then it starts to draw this outline, it'll actually be drawing it over the same part of the image that was already filled. What that effectively does is passes the laser with all its power over the same spot twice. Now for 
something like Baltic Birch, that really doesn't matter. But if it's cardboard, that second pass might be enough to actually do a cut because you've got kind of two passes over the same spot. So just keep that in mind. You may, you may do it for purpose on material and you may do it for effect sometimes. Anyway, we'll leave that one filled. Now for the text, I know I want to, I want to set a different power level for the text. I want the hand to be fairly light like we did in the last uh, video, but in this case I want the text to be dark. I don't, haven't decided what I want yet, but what I know is that the text will, will have to be a different color. Now in, in Retina Engrave, the color is kind of what determines the profile. So think of color as profile. So in the case of the text, I'll make it yellow. And what that, all that really says, the colors actually don't matter. What, what really matters is that the, I know that the text will somehow be engraved differently than the hand. And you can see there when I selected that, there were many colors there if you wanted to pick one. So you've got a choice of, I don't know, there's like 20 of them here. So you could in effect have 20 different power levels or settings on, on elements on your, on your drawing. So we're only gonna use two here, but that's how it works. So I've chosen to make the text yellow. And in this case, we'll fill it horizontally. And you know, just for fun, we won't draw an outline on the, on the hello world here. So that's kind of you know, our, our notion here of, we'll say grayscale. So in vectors, you don't, you don't have grayscale like you would if you were say engraving an image, but you, have, you can have different power settings for these different elements. So what do we actually wanna do with these? Well, if we pick the hand, You'll see right now that for, for black, the energy level is set to 100 speed, 100 power, and 100 current. And again, you know, in the case of FSL, they separate power and current. So what we'll do to, to make that happen is we'll select uh, Baltic Birch because that's the material we're gonna engrave in. And like I said, I wanna make the hand a bit lighter. So I'll use 30% there. And for the text, again, it's Baltic Birch but I wanna make it much darker, so I'll pick uh, 90%. And again, you can see the power settings over on the side here, but they'll also show up here. So now if I pick just at the vector level, you can see that we have the two colors. Now, we get to the point where we need to draw a cut line. So how do we actually do that? So in the last video, th there were this set of blue icons in the corner, and we didn't really talk much about them, but you know, this time we'll, we'll kind of touch on them, and maybe in a subsequent video we can go into much more detail. So in order to draw a cut line here, what I'll do is I'll select the rectangle tool, and I'll, I'll just draw a rectangle. So you can see the rectangle's there. Now notice I didn't kind of size it properly here, so I can select the rectangle, and I can grab any of the anchor points, and I can move things around if I you know, want to grab a corner, I can size both directions. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really kind of that simple. So there's our cut line and it's not quite centered, so I can move it over a bit. I could, I, actually I could do, let's do this. I can select the rectangle. Now notice on the left hand side here, the rectangle is separate from the rest of the vectors. So what I'm going to do is drag that into the, into the hello world vector. So all of these things are kind of clustered together. Now, what I can do is select all of these. So they're all selected and I can go over to these alignment tools up at the top and I can say align them left or align them center. And uh, we'll leave it at that. And same on the vertical, I can, I can align them. Now this one will get a bit weird because if say hello, hand and world were three different elements, if I hit align center, all of these things would go along the center line. So, you know, that may not be the des desired effect. Here, it didn't happen because I only have these two elements, the hello world block and the hand block. So centering both of those is, you know, it's just fine in this example because you can see the, the outline of the hello world is a fairly big box. So there we've got our, our hand and hello world and our box all aligned now. now I haven't set the power level for, for this orange. You can see it's orange here and hopefully you're not colorblind. So uh, again, we don't want full power, full speed here. Uh, so I know this is Baltic Birch. So I'll pick the eight, eighth inch Baltic Birch, which is what I'm using and, and it's a cut. And these, prof these material settings, by the way, I'll leave a link up above. Uh, I did a video a while back on materials and I created these, this set of profiles. 
you'll have to kind of experiment with some of these for your particular laser. Even if it's a 45 watt Muse 3D like mine, the settings, the power settings may be different if your optics aren't quite aligned the same way or the, or the laser power is fluctuated a bit uh, relative to mine. But it'll give you a good set of, of starting points. So there we go. Uh, we're pretty much ready, ready to, to do an engrave here. We have, uh, so anything that's black will be this 30% power, which will be, you know, something, a light etching. Then the yellow will be a 90% power, 90% grayscale, we'll say. Uh, and that's the text. And then we have the cut line, which is 40% speed. So it's running slower, but it's full power. Now there's only a couple of other things we can, we can do here that I'll kind of talk about. First one, Unlike a raster, we can pick individual elements here. So if you recall from the previous video, I tried to turn the hand around to make it a left hand. I'm left-handed, so I want this to be a left hand. Uh, with a raster, we couldn't do that because everything is, is all in kind of a collective rather than having individual selections. But here, I can, I can say select this and flip it horizontally, and now it becomes a, a left hand. Uh, and, and that's now separate from all these other things. That's one of the big advantages of vectors is you have this ability while you're laying it out. Even if it came from a drawing tool, you have this ability to kind of manipulate things. You know, for example, I could move this hand up here if I wanted to, which I couldn't do with a raster at all. The other thing, again, I kind of touched on it in the previous video, but if I select everything here, the whole, the whole vector, if I said I don't like where this is, I, can, I really want this to be uh, to be three, and in this case, it's inches from the from the left and three from the top. And this is the top of the workspace, not the top of the of what you see here. So I can move things around. The other thing I can do is say I want this to be a little smaller. The piece of material I have isn't isn't as big as this. And now, if you're resizing something like this, where where it really matters, you want to make sure you you select this aspect ratio button so that when you scale the size, and I'll change it here, you'll see that the, the height also changes with the width. So it didn't change much because I didn't really change the width much. But if you didn't do that and you said, hey, I want this to be four, uh, you can see that things got kind of fatter. Now that may be what you want, but I don't in this case. So I usually make sure that this thing is selected. Uh, last thing here we'll talk about is, is angle. If sometimes if you have a piece of material and this thing will fit, but it won't fit at a 90 degree angle, you can, you can actually rotate things one way or the other. And, and if you want it to go the other direction, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it would be a negative 15 degrees. So you can do that. I won't rotate it here. So I'll just leave it at zero. So that's pretty much it. We covered a few more things here and we're ready to uh, fire up the laser and, and get this engraved so, and, and cut because now we have this cut line. Now, the reason you'd want to be able to do this cut line with the vector uh, is if, let's say this Hello World hand drawing came from uh, Etsy, for example. Lots of people sell SVG files on Etsy. They don't normally include a cut line with them because they don't know how you're going to cut this out. So you may want to be able to just say, well, here's the dimensions of, of the cut line that I want around it. And the easiest way to do that, you could certainly pull it into a drawing program and do it, but the easiest way to do it is to load it into your laser and uh, as a vector, draw this rectangle, drop it into that vector group, and, and then all you have to do is set the power. So, so that's it, and let's get the laser started, and uh, we'll come back on the other side.
There we go, we have another project in the bag. Uh, I'll post a picture up here on the finished product. Now, as you can see, the text as planned is much darker than the hand itself. And I happen to have the, the original from the previous video. So I had the, the original raster and if I just hold them both up here, you can see. So on the raster, you know, as expected, it's all one, one shade, we could have made it darker, but uh, aside from that, we couldn't adjust things individually. And with the, uh, with the vector-based one, of course, we can individually select elements and change attributes on those just simply by changing the color on screen and then adjusting the profile for that color. So it's really that simple. Now, vectors, of course, are a little more of a challenge, but once you get get really into them, what you'll discover is you use them all the time because you do get so much more uh, power to manipulate what things look like. And for me personally, the only time I really use a raster is if it's an image and I'm trying to, I'm trying to engrave some photo on a, on a piece of wood or whatever. So hopefully you get something out of, out of this video and it inspires you to play a little more with vectors. And uh, we also touched a bit on some of the drawing tools that are in Retina Engrave 3, and we'll continue to poke away at those if we do a third in this series. By all means, leave a comment if you want to see a little more detail uh, in Retina Engrave 3. And uh, as always, I'll leave a video over on the side. Go watch it. In this case, I'll leave the first part of this series there. And uh, you know, if you want to go watch it, I'll see you over there. And remember, if you're going to buy a, an FSL laser, feel free to use my coupon code. You'll find it in, in the description. And with that, uh, go make your world and I'll see you next time.